for a little minute, I didn't think Apple was going to release Logic Pro for the iPad. I ain't going to lie. I was a little skeptical. But they did. And today we're going to go ahead and make a beat with it. And I'm going to tell you guys some things I like about it and some things I don't like about it. So let's get to it. Bolo! All right, so Logic Pro is finally on the iPad. And yes, as of right now, you can get it. So you can go ahead and go to the App Store and get the new Logic Pro for the iPad for the subscription price of $4.99 a month or $49 per year, which you guys know how I feel about the whole subscription thing. I think they should have an option for us to buy it, but I'm not the one who makes up the rules for that. But today... We're gonna go ahead and do something a little different. I'm actually gonna make a beat on it. And instead of me going through all of the specs and everything like that, I'm gonna show you guys how I get started to making beats on the new Logic Pro for the iPad. So this is just my way of doing it. I know there's several other ways of making beats on Logic Pro for the iPad, but I wanna show you guys my way so you guys can go ahead and get started if you're not familiar with making beats on the iPad or if you're not familiar with making beats on Logic Pro, period. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And uh, I think there was only like one thing that I really didn't like about uh, you know the whole Logic Pro on the iPad, but we'll discuss that when we get to it. So make sure you guys go ahead and watch the whole video so you can go ahead and see how I do it. And uh, I will see you guys at the end of the video. So let's get to it. All right, so for all of you guys who just paid your subscription, whether monthly or yearly, this is the first thing you're gonna see. You're gonna see right here, create project. And we're gonna go ahead and click on that and we're gonna create our first project. As you guys can see, they have a whole bunch of tutorials and stuff on here. They have sound packs, which you can go in here and you can download all the sound packs because they come loaded. Logic comes loaded with a whole bunch of sounds on here and they have live loops and all that stuff like that too. But I'm just gonna go ahead and get started the way I usually make beats because I'm just doing nothing but production in this video. If you guys wanna see like me recording and all that stuff, there will be other videos showing that, but today is just really for you guys to see how to get started making beats in the Logic Pro for iPad. So we're gonna click right here on tracks, and the first thing they're gonna do is ask us, do you want a MIDI, audio, pattern, drummer, or patches, loop, samples? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click right here, and you, I've already been using this already, but we're gonna go ahead and just go right here to the default patch, and then we're gonna create that. Now, the good thing about Logic is it comes with a whole bunch of sounds and a whole bunch of tools to get you started. So if you need effects and everything, they already have it in here. If you need sounds, they already have it in here, so you're good, okay? You don't have to worry about it, but over time, you probably might wanna go ahead and get you some AUV3 compatible stuff to work in here because there is a whole bunch of uh, dope companies that make AUV3 sounds and tools to help you guys out. And uh, you know, they're really dope. Right now we have uh, just all the internal stuff going on right now. And these are the sounds that I downloaded. So let's go ahead and play these sounds. First thing you do is you can just audition sound by just clicking right here on the little note thing right here. And oh, I forgot. I actually have my iPad hooked up to my uh, my Model 12 because that is a class compliant. The only problem is uh, I got it set for 44.1, so let me go ahead and set this. Let me go to project settings right here and put this sample rate to 44.1. My bad. But yes, you can use class compliant uh, audio interfaces on here along with MIDI keyboards and make this thing a real studio, okay? Now you can do everything with your, you know, your, your ear pods and all that stuff like that, but do not use Bluetooth stuff. Do not use your Bluetooth. You have to plug this stuff in, okay? But I do have a video showing you guys my setup and I will place that at the end of the video if you guys wanna see that and you guys can go ahead and get you some class compliant stuff as well so you guys can get a better sound from this. All right, so now let's go ahead and play these. So I'm gonna click right here on this uh, little note thing right here and it plays that and then okay cool these sound cool but i'm, I'm really trying to find something different so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go right here to this little hamburger thing right here click on that and i'm gonna go to instruments and i'm gonna find a piano and what is this oh that's steinway okay that sounds good and it just you know this time we're just gonna just drag it on in there and then what we can do now is we can go ahead and add some effects to it now if you want to add some effects, we can just go right here 
to this little button right here. We click on that and that way we can kind of edit things right there. So with this sampler, some of the sounds you can edit, some of the sounds you can't. With this particular sound, you can't edit it. And because I'm going to show you right here, if you click on this sampler right here, it's going to show you that it cannot be edited on here as of right now. But it's all good. It sounds pretty decent. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to audio effects and I'm going to go right here to Logic Pro and I'm going to go right here to reverb and I'm going to use the chroma verb on here. Inside of the chroma verb, we can go ahead and we can just scroll up and down with our finger and then, you know, you can just see all of the presets and all the stuff we can do. I'm going to turn this wet down to about 31%. And then bam, we have that done. So what we can do is we can just go back right here, press this little back button right here, and then bam. All right, so we have our piano and everything in here. Everything is sounding good. What I'm gonna do right now is I like to record with input quantized turned on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right here to track, click on that, we're gonna go to region defaults, okay? Go to region defaults, and we're gonna click on quantize onto one eighth note. Now, when we select this, pretty much when we make other tracks, this is going to be the default. It's going to be the one eighth quantize on here. So we don't have to change this unless we don't want quantize turned on. We got everything ready to go. I'm going to take this off for right now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my metronome and then we're going to hit record. And we're going to record a very cheap piano part because I'm not going to make the best beat in the world. I'm just showing you guys how to get started, okay? So don't beat me up over the beat. So here we go, let's go ahead and press record. All right, cool, so we got that in there, it quantized good. Now, we wanna go ahead and we wanna loop this. All we simply have to do is right here, you see this little grayed out little part right here? You can either press this loop right here or you can just press that right here and it will go ahead and loop it. So. We already have our part looped, so now we play it back. All right, sounds good. So now what I wanna do is I wanna add my own AUV3 instrument to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press this plus sign right here. I'm gonna go right here to, you know, the little three dots right here. And instead of going to the default patch, I'm gonna go right here to instruments and I'm gonna go to audio units instruments, and I'm gonna use uh, Gospel Musicians uh, Pure Synth Platinum. So now that we have that, we're gonna go right down here to this little knob right here so we can pull this up, and then we're gonna click on Pure Synth Platinum. So now we have it in here, and I already have some presets saved, and then you know, you can kinda go in here, and, and as you guys can see, this right here, if you pull this up, it'll fit this inside of here so you can see the whole plugin. So now I'm gonna go right here, and I'm gonna scroll down to uh, my uh, factory content. I'm gonna go to my faves, and I got this, what's this? Okay, I'm gonna use that. How about that? I'm gonna use that. So let's close that back out, and let's record that as well. And let's just double check, just to make sure that the quantizing stuff is on. Let's go right here, go to regions default. Yeah, the quantizer is still on there. We're good. It's already set, so let's go ahead and add this part in here real quick. All right, cool, so we got that part in there. If we had to edit any notes, anything like that, we can just click on the region, and then we can just hit this little pencil tool right here, and we can edit the notes. So we can actually you know, go in here and move notes up and down, move them over, the same way you could do in regular Logic Pro, but now we can have touch screen, we can just move the screen around and do all that good stuff. So we're good. This thing works exactly like the Logic Pro, okay? So let's go ahead and get out of that. Um, let's go ahead and click this out of here and click that. One thing I do want to say is be careful. This is not the back button right here at the top, okay? This is gonna take you back to where you load your sessions at. Do not click on this because it's gonna take you back and you don't wanna be doing that. You don't know how many times I hit that when I'm making beats. The back button is right here if you wanna go back, you know, the undo button. So this is where it's at. Do not click this. It's a whole bunch of stuff that looks like this, but don't click this one at the top, 
it's gonna mess you up. All right, cool. So now we got two sounds in here. Let's go and add some drums. Now, this is one thing that I kind of didn't like because we have to use two different methods of getting our own personal drums in. Now, they do have a lot of drums in here, but of course you guys know I got my own drum kits, Bolo the Producer kits. I see what they're trying to do, but at the end of the day, a lot of us like to use loops. A lot of us like to use third-party samples and everything like that. So we want to be able to slide our samples in, okay? So the best way that I found out doing it is using the files uh, manager inside of your iPad. Now you can make a drum machine designer patch inside of your uh, laptop and then import it into the iPad, which is cool, but eh, I don't know if you wanna do all that. That's just too much work. You know, you can you know, do it through iCloud and all that stuff, but that's just too much work. It's actually just best to go ahead and use it through the files menu on here. So, okay, let me show you guys how to do that from the jump. So what we gotta do is, now that we're in Logic, we have to go to our files menu. So we can go right down here. I got my files menu right here, and we can just go ahead and select on that and it brings you to the files menu. In order to get that to go to the side, we have to click on these three dots and go to slide over. So when it does slide over, it's going to slide over and then what I can do is I can just open up Logic from there and then if I wanna slide this out the way, I just slide this out the way, just like that with my finger <laughs> and it's done. And then we can just slide this over like this to pick sounds. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna do a hi-hat and I'm actually gonna click on the hi-hat and then when I do that, I can just kind of scroll through the sound. So if I press on that, I can hear it. And then I can just slide this over, press on it, slide this over, press on it, press on that. That's cool. So I kind of like that, that the hi-hat four. Now the thing about it is I got to remember which one it is, okay? This is the reason why I was saying that I think it would be better if we could just import our own samples into Logic and that way we can just use it the same way we picked out the piano when we first got started that makes a lot more sense than we having to use a separate file thing to, to get all this stuff in here. But either way, it's all good. So let's go ahead and slide this in here. So we're gonna take this hi-hat right here and we're just gonna slide this over right there. We're gonna use a quick sampler, okay? And then we're pretty much done. Let's go ahead and slide this back out the way. And then we can either just do it the, the regular way where we just do it like this real quick. Or what I like to do is, let me go ahead and get that out the way. I like to go in here and I'm gonna click on this. We're gonna do a uh, create MIDI region right here, okay? So we can create a MIDI region and then what we can do is we can go right here into the actual MIDI region right here and then we can go right here and select this, this uh, paintbrush tool and then we can set the snap. It's on set to auto, but we're gonna turn that auto off and then we're gonna put this on a 1 8 and then we're gonna take this and we're gonna slide this over. So actually, let's go ahead and take all this out, and then we're gonna just take our brush tool and then we're gonna slide this over. So we're gonna take this and we're just gonna hit this and we're gonna slide this all the way over and we just slide them just like that till we hit right there and then bam. So now we press play. And let's speed this tempo up. Let's go, uh, let's go 135, yeah. All right, so we're gonna play that. Now, I'm gonna show you guys a little secret sauce on here. Instead of us like adding the triplets in that way, you can use the brush, you can add your triplets and stuff like that in here. So if we want to you know, go in here and say for instance, we want to uh, put like a 1 32nd and maybe add like a triplet, maybe like somewhere right here, we can go in and add like a triplet and stuff like that. I'm not gonna do it that way. It's actually a better way you can actually do it and it's actually pretty cool. And I've been doing this on other programs as well and even on my laptop but they actually have something very special here in the new Logic Pro on the iPad that you, can, that you guys can use. So we can actually go right here, we can click right here, and then we can add an audio effect. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go all the way down here, we're gonna slide down, we're gonna go to um, multi-effects, we're gonna select Beat Breaker. This is the sauce right here. So you're gonna go ahead and click, click on Beat Breaker, and as you guys can see, it's already moving. Now, one thing that you guys can see on Beat Breaker, it has halftime. So we collect, if we click on that, we can click on it and watch this. Already got halftime on there. So you can do that on all your instruments, all your samples. So we have halftime in here now. And another thing is too, we have this custom thing right here 
to where let's go ahead and let's, let, let's make this just a little bit bigger. We have a custom tool on here. And then what we can do is we have time on here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to repeat. So it just plays four beats right there. Let's go ahead and make this to eight beats. What we can do now is I can go right here, click an extra little line right here so we can split that up. Then I can go to repeat and I can hover over this and I can chop up the notes just like that. And then watch this, I'll play it back. Dope, simple and easy. So now I can take this last part and I can just kind of like chop this up into threes and then watch this. And you can do this for eight beats. You can do this for 16 beats, all the way up to 16 beats. Easy, dope. We're done with the hi-hats, okay? So we can go out of that with the hi-hats and now we can go ahead and add a clap. So all we have to do now is slide this over. We go back right here. We go to my X-Factor drum kick claps. I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna like this first one. That's cool. I like that one. And then we're just gonna slide this over right here. Done. Gonna do a quick sampler. We're good to go. Just gotta slide this back over, unless we wanna see it. And then we can just add this in, or we can hit it with our fingers right here on the thing if we want to, or we just use our MIDI controller. And then we just go ahead and record this part in. Just like that, we are done. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a bass. So we're gonna slide this over. We're gonna go back into here. We're gonna add an 808 bass. Let's see if I can find something I like. Let's play it in here. All right, that's cool. That's cool, we'll just use that for right now. So we like that, we're gonna use that first one. Slide this thing over. Bam, we're gonna do a quick sampler. And then now with the bass, you know, we don't want that poly to be too much. We want to turn that polyphony down. So what we're going to do is we're going to go right here, go into the quick sampler. And matter of fact, let's take that out of there. We're going to go into the quick sampler. And right here where it says amp, it has eight voices right there. We're going to turn that down to mono. And we're going to do this as a one shot as well. So we're pretty much ready to go. Let's get out of that. Bam, we got us a very quick beat. It's pretty much done. And then if we wanna add any other effects to it, like say for instance, the bass. Say for instance, we don't wanna have too much low bass rumble in there. We can go in, add our effects. We can go in and add even just the Logic Pro EQ is actually very dope. We can use that Logic Pro EQ, or we can go in here and then we can use maybe something like uh, the Fab Filter EQ, which I love, right? So we can go in here. I have the whole Fab Filter Suite, but you know, the good thing about it being on the iPad is the suites are very much cheaper than what you would normally pay for these products. So the whole Fab Filter Suite was only like 130 bucks for everything. So I can go right here to the Pro Q3, and then I can go right in here, and then now I can use my fingers instead of you know using the mouse, and I can just change certain parameters, and then bam, I can really just go in and use my fingers and change these parameters on there. And I can put this at a, so that low, that low rumble will come out of there real quick. I can take that, press play. All right, and there it is. We have a whole beat and we can add effects and do everything to it. So now we can go into our mixer and then now we can go into our mixer and then uh, we can actually take this out right here. We can go into our mixer, we can, make this mix a little bit bigger. And then say for instance, we're gonna turn some things up or down. We can actually just turn everything up and down if we want to. We can go in here and do that. We can turn things up and down and then we can kind of mix this a little bit. And that way we won't be peaking because we know a lot of you guys don't like when stuff be peaking. So.
All right, cool. So we got that in there. And now what we can do is like on our stereo track, we can go right here. And then say, for instance, we want to add an audio effect to it. We can go right here and just add the limiter to it. And then pretty much we're done. So we can go in here, add the limiter to it. And you know, you turn the gain up. All right, and we got some gain reduction and we're pretty much done. So now we have some sort of a mix on here. Okay, I'm just showing you guys something real quick. Now we can go ahead and take this out of here and then we can go right here and now we can pattern out this track. Now, there's several ways you can do this. You can go right here, you can hold and then you can kind of like hold right here and then you can do this and then, you know, you, you can you can take it, click on it and then, you know, say you can, you know, cycle the selection or, you know, do stuff like that. But there's actually a faster way of doing it. You can actually just click right here on these, like these two little folder things, right? These little things right here. Once you have everything highlighted, you can just take it and you can just drag it just like that. Bam. Take it, drag it just like that. I can highlight everything I need, take it, and just drag this thing on over. Let's take this part right here. And then we just drag this right over right there. And then now I can actually go through and I can sequence this track. So if I want to take certain things out, what I can do is, like right now I want to take the kick out. I can take this kick out and then I can just go ahead and just delete that. And then say for instance, uh, this part, I want to take this out. I can delete that. And if I want to select parts in between here, I can just take this and I can take these and just highlight certain things. And then I could just uh, delete those right there as well. So I can highlight those and then, you know, saying click on that, delete those. And then now I can just really pretty much just like make my own, you know, sequence and everything like that. So now we got that. Take those, you know, saying double click on those and delete that. And now we have a whole beat. So now when we just play it back now, here we go. And uh, we're going to take this uh, loop off. So we play it back. So there it is. Really simple, quick beat. So you guys can, you know, see how to do it. And uh, yeah, it's actually a very good program. If we can get that file management thing kind of updated, I think this will be a great program for you guys to use. So I hope this video was informative. I hope you guys learned something from it. And like I always say, peace out.